And welcome back. Now today's video is all about infrared, but not in the sense of communication with data streams like you'd get from, say, a TV remote control. It's more about the detection of infrared as it stands, you know, native raw values, uh, which explains this block of perspex on my screen here, because that's going to be a replacement, I hope, one day for the CAT run rain sensor that I built a while ago. The rain sensor itself has corroded pretty much before my very eyes. And frankly, it's just a nuisance now. I've actually replaced it once just, just as a, a quick, well, solution really, I thought. But uh, that corroded also in just a matter of weeks. And here you can see what it looks like brand new out of the box, more or less on the left hand side. And then what it looks like after, I don't know, a few weeks with all the rain and the sun and bird droppings and what have you. I mean, it's, it's looking pretty bad. And that's because of the DC component on that sensor. That's what it does to it. Now, whilst there might be something I might be able to do on the actual sensor itself, basically change the sensor to use an AC signal, I don't believe that's the long-term answer. After all, it's going to get wet, dirty, corroded, because there is electricity present. So I'm looking at something else. And the very thing I'm looking at, of course, is this well, infrared via a Perspex block. Now, I can't remember how much I told you about this before, but uh, basically, as you know, light travels in straight lines. So in this Perspex block, I'd expect light from infrared to travel in straight lines. And as you know from when you stick a pencil or indeed this pointer here into a glass of water, the diffraction of that light or, or the stick indeed in water would be bent at a particular angle. Now, what this means is on here, is that light traveling in say from this edge if you point it from in here it would hit one of these edges be reflected because as you can see look if i turn it at an angle you can see that this bottom edge look you can't see through it at this angle it acts as a mirror to light which is exactly what i want because then it will bounce up and go all around now i can i can ex show you this believe it or not with this um, laser that I happen to have here. This laser, incidentally, it's a one milliwatt green laser. It's um, It's got an 18650 battery inside, and as you can see, it's pretty powerful. And I was made aware of these, funnily enough, on my recent holiday in the jungle, as it were. And uh, the bird spotters there, or the, the tour guide bird spotters, were using this because they could point up in a tree and say, over there, third branch, and you'd see this really bright green a pointer on a branch or a leaf or something he didn't know where to look and I thought that would be very useful for my next holiday so I've got one but I can show you now if I hold this on here exactly where the beam goes watch this this would be interesting now look at that you can actually see the beam going through this perspex more to the point you can see it bouncing off the bottom of the screen of the uh, perspex block there so it bounces off so if I hold it at an angle it gets distorted but you can see the point see that very bright point in the middle that's where it's actually getting bounced off up to the top um, back onto this left edge over here and then out again more or less where my fingers waggling about that's where the beam is actually coming out if I move it further down the beam is emitted up here a bit more see see how my finger goes bright and if I move it down it moves so on that basis I mean, that is pretty cool, isn't it? On that basis, what I'm hoping for is I can use one of these detectors and a simple transmitter like I have over here, um, not quite so close together. I'd have to remove the, uh, the two from here, but I can, I can place them exactly onto this block. So the transmitter in one place, the receiver exactly where it needs to be as shown by this. So if, for example, I put the transmitter here, then you can see exactly where the receiver is going to go. Now I'm hoping that this unit doesn't transmit in quite that, um, what's the word, non-scattered mode. I hope this does scatter it a little bit more because I don't want it just to receive in a particular point. I want it to receive generally in that area. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I using LEDs on a piece of Perspex to discover whether it's raining or not? Well, frankly, if we turn it upside down so that the the sensor unit would effectively be under here somewhere. If you get water drops on here or on here, where that light bounces off, the light will use that water drop as a means to escape in or to escape at an angle. 
And therefore, of course, the detection will say, oh, my light level's just dropped, it must be raining. And the beauty of it is, of course, when the sun comes out and dries it all off, it will go back to normal without any corrosion or anything else. That's the plan anyway. Right, before we get on to details of that, let's have a look at a few other things that have come across my desk recently. Uh, now, first of all, here is my soldering iron. Nothing particularly fancy or special about this. It's just a standard Antex CS. I've had it for quite a while. I use a couple of different um, soldering irons depending on what do I need them for. Um, this one's for fairly delicate things, but uh, I was soldering something the other day, sort of a surface mounted thing, and this one millimetre uh, tip here is just far too big. So I thought, what else do they do? Let's have a look and get a couple of spares in. So what I'm gonna do is remove this one, it's very tight, so I'm gonna have to do it off camera, and uh, show you a couple of new ones and how much better they are these days. Right, so I've uh, removed this, and as you can see by the dent in my finger then, it was pretty tight, because this clip does hold it tight. Um, and it's also not particularly clean underneath there, is it? That'll have to be cleaned up. However, that notwithstanding, um, I've got a couple of new ones here from Antex, and as you can see, they are very, very fine pointed indeed. This one I think is half a millimetre, so it's half the size of the one that was already on there. And this one, it's even got a protective little piece of sleeving on it, uh, is in fact 0.2, I believe, something like that. It's tiny and it, and it is pretty sharp, but it'd be ideal for getting into surface mount type stuff, wouldn't it? So I'm going to put that protective thing back on again because that is like a needle in there. Now, this one, as you can see, is unplated because apparently that's, that's a good thing these days, but I'll let you know when I finally get to use it. But one of the advancements they have made is that instead of that clip on the outside, this is my original one, you see this clip on the outside that's supposed to hold it onto this um, heating element shaft, the transfer of heat isn't particularly great because obviously this, this clamps it in one particular place. And um, well, the heat gets transferred here, but not necessarily up here particularly well. However, the new one, if you look inside there, you can just make out there's a sort of a little shim in there, look. So there's no clip on the outside anymore, and this isn't split. There's a little tiny shim in there, and that just literally slides on. Look at that, how easy is that? Oh, look at the mess of my hands. I'll have to clean that up. Anyway, so that's nice and easy. Uh, the other one is exactly the same. Here it is. But this on this one, the shim actually seems to come out when I take it off so that you can have a, a really close look. It's very, very thin and shaped like a sort of a hexagon, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So, um, yeah, and it, and it definitely has come out deliberately, but when I push it back in again, it just sort of slides on. There we are. And that's supposed to make the heat transfer a lot, lot more efficient. And when you take it off, apart from knocking my camera, uh, the actual shim comes out again. Fine. Why the shim doesn't come out the other one, I have no idea. It's just one of those things, isn't it? Now, that's fine for delicate stuff. Of course, you try soldering anything, even with the uh, the one millimetre. I've got a, a few tips downstairs, three millimetre, and I've got a chisel tip and things like that. But basically, this iron being approximately, you know, 16 watts, 18 watts maybe, it's, it just hasn't got the oomph, the heat capacity, to actually solder anything chunky. You just can't do it. So what do I use in that case? Well, I have another one, a temperature controlled one, so I can whack up the temperature. It's got a bigger bit on it as well. That sort of works. But let me show you my reasonably new Dremel one. I've only had it for a few months, really, and uh, it's coming to its own. So let's have a look at that next. Right, so this is the Dremel gas-driven one. Now you might think, oh, gas, can I be bothered all that faffing about? Let me tell you, it's pretty easy, actually, if I can get the thing out. Um, all you do is use um, lighter fuel to fill it up here. So you can buy the lighter fuel, you know, from stationers or whatever, and you just push it down on here, fills this up. No, you can't hear it sloshing about, that, but it's, it's pretty easy to do. And uh, this thing here is, is really excellent. The tip at the very end does in fact screw in and exposes. It's a bit tight. I suspect the, uh, the last heating thing I had, I'm going to have to take this out off camera now, um, has probably caused it to sort of expand a little bit. Let me get this off using, I think there's a special spanner in here, oh there it is, special spanner, and um, I'm going to do this off camera, and unscrew this and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. 
So here it is then with the soldering tip removed, which is probably about, what, two millimetres maybe, something like that. But it's not so much the size of the tip that's uh, the issue here, it's the fact that it can get really, really hot. And this is solid metal. Um, well, the tip is, not, not the screw bit, and therefore retains the heat. So when you touch something that's a big chunk of metal, it doesn't just drain the heat out of the tip immediately, leaving you with nothing, no flowing solder. Now, to start this up, um, this isn't meant to be an advert for this, by the way. I'm just sort of telling you what I use. So start this up, you just flick this off. Now, that's not lit. It makes a really screeching noise when it starts. Told you. So that's starting up, and already you can see it getting really hot in here and if I turn it towards the camera there like you can see it's getting red hot. Now uh, you can lock it on by this button here you just slide that over when it's on and you can adjust the force of the flame. Now that's good as it is in fact to do some heat shrink work. In fact they even give you a special thing in here to do it with which is this one here. So you just slide this on here. Got to wash it now it's hot. <laughs> So you just slide that on there like that. I'm not going to do it fully on, but you can see what it's going to do. Put the cable in with the heat shrink on here, and that it sort of ensures that the entire cable and heat shrink is all heated at once. It is a bit fierce though, so you have to be very careful and move it along a bit. But it, it works pretty good actually, I've got to say. It's, it's nice. And it does come with some bigger bits. You can just see them here, sort of chisel bits, which I haven't used yet. And I don't even know what that one is, frankly. I should have. Should have really prepared this, shouldn't I? <laughs> well, I haven't used whatever that is over there. I haven't used it. And this is a sort of a blowtorchy thing. And that's just the cap that I use to put over this when it's hot. I just put it over it so I can put it back in the box without burning down my house. So that's what I use for bigger jobs. Not for delicate stuff like this in the background and not electronics. But if you're, if you're um, soldering, perhaps, I don't know, a big bolt or something or wire onto a, a spade terminal that's a bit chunky, um, then you do need a bit more heat and those little tiny electronic ones just just won't cut the mustard. So that's what I use for electronics. Um, they're my nice new bits plus the original one. Um, I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. And one final thing that's um, crossed through my desk. If you remember I did a, a video on the uh, Tiny 85 a little while ago and I came to the conclusion that well actually it's it's okay, it works. Um, it's got built-in software I2C and SPI and all that kind of stuff, which I haven't really explored too much. But I did mention that it probably hasn't got enough GPIO pins to make it particularly useful. So what I bought here is a shield. Um, as you can see, I got it from eBay, although it is in fact a chap over in Greece. Greece um, and he really does seem switched on. You get something else apart from the shield, it gives you a couple of other little bits. Oh yes, where you can put in the actual... 80 tiny here to um, program it. So it seems a pretty good deal. And of course, I'll do more information on this when I actually get the 80 tiny 85 up and running and hopefully working on I squared C. But I just thought I'd um, show you that while it's while it's come across my desk. Because once I unpack this, I'll probably never find the instructions again. So there it is. Okay. Right. Because I think that 80 tiny 85 is going to be quite useful going forward. And remember, it's cheap. It's about a pound a board. Obviously, this is added on, but this is only a sort of one-off, isn't it, really? A one-off charge whilst you experiment with it. Then you can put it into the little, um, the 80 tiny. We'll just use it as normal. So there we are. Okay, so that's that. Let's get back onto the infrared stuff then and uh, see what I'm going to do now with that big chunk of plastic, which incidentally... Is an exact 45 degrees down here so that the bouncing of that laser that I showed you and it's so good I'm going to show you again so that bouncing of the laser is absolutely accurate like that see because if it wasn't if it was at a funny old angle see look the beam would eventually exit now you might be asking why doesn't if you're shining the beam down there why doesn't it come out well of course some of the light does come out but as I say that is a mirror finish down there effectively and therefore bounces off. You can see it actually bouncing off the bottom of the of the uh, chunk of perspex there, more or less where my ring finger is. There you can see it bouncing up. So there we are. I think that's going to be, well, I think that might well be the solution for my rain sensor. Indeed, this is exactly, apparently, how they do rain sensors in your car. They shine an infrared, not a laser, an infrared, so one of these, uh, or detect it with one of these and 
send it with one of these and somehow detect that reliably you don't get the windscreen wipers just going on for no reason at all do you so i don't want this unit saying when it's all built it's raining when it's not that would be extremely annoying so let's see how far i get with that and uh, and i'll update you all of course if and when i get the thing working properly and that's where we're going to leave it today i hope you like the demo with the uh, the laser gun and of course the uh, information on the soldering irons well you know if you haven't seen these things before it's all new isn't it so thank you very much indeed for watching please leave comments down below don't forget to share subscribe and generally have fun with all the rest of the videos thanks very much for watching see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching